What's up guys, Holland Nguyen, OG Fitness. Welcome back to the channel. This one, we're gonna talk about how often should you train judo if you wanna be really good at judo? And uh, the answer is not what you think, guys. Uh, I know that most people would tell you, uh, well, if you wanna get good at something, you have to do it as often as possible. But there are some nuances to that. And uh, it, for my situation specifically, it's a little bit different. But let me, before I dive into the details of that, let me read you guys the question that sparked, um, well, that inspired this video. Uh, and that happens a lot these days, guys. You guys are asking uh, questions in the comment section and sending me emails. So thank you for that, keep them coming. It keeps, uh, well, it keeps, um, it gives me a lot of, you know, video ideas to uh, to make and to you know answer these questions and, and share you guys like um, uh, my thoughts and uh, and uh, my journey and, and so forth. Anyways, let's get right into it. So this one uh, comes from James. Uh, out of curiosity for your situation, if I'm not mistaken, you said your goal is to become a high level judoka and compete in some major tournaments. Do you feel like you're splitting your time too much with striking for that? Since you started later in life, wouldn't it be better to solely focus on judo and maybe BJJ? Uh, striking to grappling arts, um, sticking, sorry, sticking to grappling arts until you reach your goal or feel satisfied enough uh, that you want to start cross, uh, start cross training. That's a great question, James. And what James is referring to is that I'm, my goal is because I'm a brown belt in judo. I've been doing that for, uh, I've been doing judo for about six years. And the goal is to become, eventually become a world champion in judo in my division. So I'm 42. So that means that it's gonna be masters uh, free, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, if uh, I win it at 40-ish, right? Once you hit 45 though, then it, it, goes, it goes up to masters uh, four, I believe. And I think it's every five, it's, it's by five year increments. Mm, okay, so here's the thing with judo, and I spoke to my my coach regarding this, and I spoke to um, my first coach, which I reconnected with uh, recently, which is really cool, and I even spoke to my um, sports therapist and uh, osteopath. <clears throat> right, so here here's the thing: when when you're a kid, it's all about volume because well you're young mm, you know it's uh things the body is different when you're young because you're smaller you're lighter you know when you fall it doesn't hurt all that much you know you're growing you know and so you could take um for lack of a better term more abuse to your body so you want to get in as much volume as you possibly can but once you get to the national team at least here in, in, in Canada where I am, okay? You don't train every single day in judo anymore. Uh, the volume part of it is done. You do that when you're, you're, when you're young and then by the time you get to the national team, which is, um, if I'm not mistaken, um, you know, there's junior nationals and then there's, uh, okay, well anyways, by the time you get to nationals, okay, like you're, you're essentially competing, sorry, you're training not every day, but anywhere between three or four times a week, intense judo. The rest of the time, you're doing other stuff. So you're doing your conditioning, uh, you know, you're doing your, um, uh, your mobility work, you know, you're doing your um, uh, other sports actually to, you know, um, other activities that aren't risky, of course, to just stay fit, stay healthy, and um, as a form of active recovery, but also, so that um, it gives you time, it gives time for everything to sink in, right? Because the thing with judo is that it's really, really hard on the body. And at my age, so imagine this is for people at the national level. Once they get on the national team, they don't even train judo every day anymore. Now imagine a guy, especially after, after 30 years of age, and I'm 42 guys, like forget about it. You, 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 you can't do, even four times a week would be extreme. Three times a week is is really enough. Like it's more than enough. And even those three times, they're they're um, they're periodized properly, which means that 
For example, on Monday, it would be like the heavy sparring day, right? And then on Wednesday, it would be technique. And then on Friday, it would be conditioning. Um, conditioning, judo conditioning. So we're doing a lot of throws and stuff like that to practice. And that's really all you need you know, and that your body could handle. And then for, so the other, the, on the other days you would do something else. You would do, uh, you know, you would swim, you would do, uh, you would jog, you would, um, um, you know, do play basketball or whatever. And that would be good. In my case, instead of doing, because I care nothing about other sports, like I don't feel like playing basketball. Um, you know, I'm not a basketball player. I don't, I don't bike, I don't run. So what do I like to do? Well, I like to do other martial arts. So that's why I, I do striking. Now, when, when you look at my videos when I'm striking, I'm not actually going hard, you know? Like, of course, there it does happen that, you know, we hit each other somewhat hard and, you know, I get a little bit dinged up here and there. I mean, I might feel it, but, you know, it's, it's few and far in between. For the most part, we go light. I have fun. It's not very intense at all, um, you know? Uh, it's it's good little cardio workout to me. It's the equivalent of uh, you know aerobics kind of, so that gets my mind off of judo uh, helps and and it's just fun. Like I enjoy it because I'm a martial artist. And then sometimes I'll do some um, some wrestling and some jujitsu in there. Right now that would be mostly on Tuesday, Thursday, and you know Saturday, Sunday. I tend to take off if I do anything. I'll do it very light. But here's the thing too. So I make it a point to be 100% when I get to judo practice. So that means on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, I'm there and I give it my all, okay? Uh, but then when I train, when I do my striking stuff, <clears throat> striking, my wrestling, or my jiu-jitsu, I don't give it my all. Like, uh, you know, because I, I need to recover. You know, I don't need, that's not what I'm trying to perform at, so I don't really care, you know, to perform and to, um, to give it my 100%. So that's why during those classes, during those trainings, I essentially give 50% effort, you know, or even less sometimes. I'm, I'm really coasting. I'm just like looking at technique and I'm doing stuff, you know, and that's what I'm doing. So Monday, Wednesday, Friday, that's pure judo, 100% uh, effort, okay, and concentration. And then on Tuesday, Thursday, and uh, you know, the weekend, it's everything else. And I essentially half-ass it <laughs> because I enjoy it, but it's not the priority. I, I, I don't, I half-ass it in the sense that like, I don't go intense and I'm not like fully mentally engaged. I'm just there, I'm, I'm looking at it, I'm doing my thing. And of course it's still, uh, I'm still absorbing and learning a lot while I'm watching and doing things. But I mean, it's not as, I don't think as much. Whereas with judo, I think a lot. You know, like a good, um, Travis Stevens actually said this. He said that a good judo workout, you know it's good when you go home and you're mentally exhausted. You're not necessarily physically exhausted, okay? But you're mentally exhausted because you really focus on what you had to do on your technique and you're thinking, you're trying to figure out ways, okay? Like, okay, this guy does this, this guy, I grab it here, I do this. Okay, how do I fix my technique? So you see, it, you have to put a lot of mental effort into your practice. So you have to, you have to be there, you know, you have to be very present in that moment when you're training and you gotta, so for that, you ha really have to focus and use your, your brain uh, as well as your body. So I hope that makes sense, guys. Uh, I hope that answered the question. So that's why like, it doesn't actually hinder me to do, um, uh, to do, um, what do you call it? To do other stuff, to do like the striking, the, the BJJ and the wrestling, okay, on the side, like in between my, my judo, uh, what do you call it? My judo training. And the fun little fact is that the wrestling team, the Canadian wrestling team actually only trains uh, four times a week. And then after that, for the most part, they're playing. And then on the other days, they're essentially doing, um, they're playing basketball and they're swimming and they're, you know, they're jogging or biking or doing some kind of, you know, uh, relaxed activity that has, that has nothing to do even with wrestling. But I mean, when they do train in wrestling though, they train really hard. They, they you know, they, uh, their wrestling ses sessions are probably like something like four hours long or something like that. And they probably split it up. Um, but that's, that's what they do, you know? And this is like national level. So that's for wrestling. 
And in judo, it's probably very similar. You know, something like four times a week. And then after that, the rest of the time, they're doing other stuff. They're taking care of their conditioning. You know, they're stretching out, they're swimming, they're doing other activities to, um, uh, uh, to, recover, to let their bodies recover from it. And it's also a mental break. And also you need time for everything that you've, um, for your brain and even your body to process, and your body to process the information. Because it's not just in the brain that it goes, but it goes into your, your body too, right? Because everything is connected. So I hope I'm explaining that right. I hope that made sense. But that's why three times a week is, uh, is more than enough. And, um, when, I, when I'm going to be competing, I'm going to be competing with a lot of guys. There are guys who are going to be ex-national team members, very high level dudes who still compete, even um, ex-Olympians who still compete in like world championships and all that. But for the most part, it's going to be guys who just started later in life or like myself and who are, who are not at that level, right? Uh, not at, who weren't at a super high level and now they're just, they started judo later in life and now they just want to compete. So that's what it's going to be. And so I'm going to be facing off with most those guys, most likely, you know, more than I'm not going to be facing off with like uh, a whole bunch of ex nationals and ex Olympians, you know, there are going to be a few of them for sure, but not that, not as many as, uh, as, um, not as many to the point where I should be worried about and I'd be like, oh man, I'm like uh, it's gonna be impossible. I got to, uh, you know, I gotta spend every waking moment doing judo, thinking about judo and so on. And um, yeah, so also like I, I spoke with my, my first coach, I remember told me you definitely could do something in the Canadians, you know, like uh, the Canadian nationals, Canadian championships. And I talked to my coach my, now and he told me, yeah, you can do something at the Worlds, for sure, for sure. You know, like you have the judo, you have the skill set, you have the physicality and all that. You know, it's just a question of, um, well, you know, fine tuning everything and getting you ready to, uh, to compete. And of course, to compete so you get better at it. You know, I'm not going to win it the first year, obviously. But so my goal is to win the Canadians first, right? And then from there, once I win the Canadians, then after that, go on to the Worlds. You know, so I might do, I'm not saying that um, uh, I'm going to just focus on the, on, on the Canadians, uh, the Canadian championships first. I mean, that's what I have in mind in the sense that like if I win the Canadians, then I have a very good chance of performing at the Worlds, so to speak. Right. But in a year, I would probably do both of them anyway. Even if I do the Canadians and I lose, I would still go to uh, the Worlds and check it out, see what's, see what's up over there. And after that, like, um, uh, regardless of what happens, then come back home, plan, plan it out, go back to the drawing board and then prepare for the next year. You know, so this is like a long term project, guys. It's not going to it's not going to be something that I'm going to be able to do in like my first year out, you know, because this this idea of mine of going for this for the title like this, um, this is a recent thing. You know, it's only been a little bit less than a year now that I've decided, like, this is what I want to do. Anyways, uh, I hope that made sense. I know this video, oh, it's been going on. It's not too bad, guys, for 10 minutes. I've talked longer for this, longer than this, I mean. Okay, so that's it, guys. So if, uh, what do you guys think? Uh, leave it down below in the comments. Like, comment, uh, of course, I already said that. Share, and uh, I'll see you guys in the next one.